Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Autodesk just released 3D Studios Max 2020.1. Now you might be thinking to yourself, am I going crazy? It's 2019, isn't it? And no, don't worry, you're not going crazy. Perhaps Autodesk is. They seem to be working in the future. Now why they're trying to brand their products as next year, I don't know. They're taking a page out of the automotive manufacturer's book, I guess, with the new model years before the year even starts. So yeah, it's, it's confusing. But anyways, earlier back in March, they released the first version of 3D Studios Max 2020, and I think it's pretty safe to say it was underwhelming. There was no real marquee or selling feature. There was nothing on that list of features that made me go, wow. I gotta get this. Now there was definitely, there was an improved chamfer and beveling tool and you know, that's that's nice, I guess. Yeah, I'm not gonna call my mom about it. I'm not gonna call my mom about anything else either, but really I get why people were a little underwhelmed about that release. Now this one though, it has one huge feature that I'm gonna showcase first and then we'll get into the rest of the details. And that you can see right now. This is a video from the 3D Studios Max YouTube page. I will link it in the linked article down below if you wanna see the full thing. But this new feature is the ability to have multiple viewports. So what you can do now is take your 3D viewports and you can put one on your left monitor, center monitor, right monitor. Yep, you can have up to three of them if you have beefy enough hardware because you are pushing a lot of pixels at that point in time. But if you need to have different perspectives or you wanna texturing window up over here and wireframe over there and a 3D preview over there, you can do that. And I think this feature alone is going to be a straight up game changer for a lot of people's workflow. No idea how well it performs, but this is the one thing I look at and go, okay, that is worth an upgrade to me. That is kind of one of those, again, game changer style features. Now the rest of this release is a little bit less whelming, I guess we'll go with. And let's go take a look at the Autodesk site. So here's a glimpse or a summary of what is new in 2020.1. Now, obviously you see that first one is the detachable viewports. And each one of these things is a clickable video, by the way. So if you wanna learn more or it's a help file um, in some cases, but what you've got here, detachable viewports, I like that. A new hotkey editor tool, okay. The chamfer modifier was improved for the one that was added in the 2020 release, got a little bit better in 2020.1. There is new double click selection, uh, command panel improvements, autocomplete for Mac script programming, uh, Arnold 5.3, 3.0.2 out of the box. If you don't know, Arnold is a renderer. They bought it a couple of years back. It is now becoming the default renderer for 3D Studios Max in the future anyways. And they updated their public roadmap. We'll get back to the public roadmap in just a second. Um, actually, we'll, we'll cover that right now. So here you see, if you want to get a lot more details of what is coming in the future of 3D Studios Max, the public roadmap is where you want to go. This kind of shows what their plans are for the future. A little bit of a timeline. Here's the timeline of how things developed. So here is where we are at in that one. Um, and then they're kind of going forward with more details down below. So you'll see here under the roadmap, um, they do what we've done, what we're going to do. So you got, they've got environmental layout. This is actually kind of cool. Um, going to be exploring the procedural environment layouts using Bifrost to provide out of the box workflow. Now Bifrost is a procedural engine, somewhat like Houdini, uh, but for 3D Studios Max and Maya. Uh, 3D Boolean improvements. And then we've got uh, track view revamping. We've got Arnold GPU, Arnold as the default renderer, as I mentioned earlier on. Now do keep in mind, again, what we're looking at is stuff that is coming soon, not stuff that obviously is in this release. Um, and then we've got viewport quality settings and physical materials as the default. If you want to get into more details, of course, I will link this. Uh, character rig interrupt and retargeting, populate customizations, USD or the universal scene description standard promises to be a significant improvement to collaboration over large content creation pipelines. Uh, Material X is another interrupt format. Uh, we got SketchUp import. Uh, and then uh, more collaboration or details or partnerships with the Unity game engine. And they kind of keep going. Baking Detector, Automatic Retopology Tools, Fire and Smoke, uh, Python 3 support. And that's actually kind of interesting that Python is getting adoption finally. They, they were stuck in 2 land forever. But it seems like most people have decided that 3 is where it's at and that's where they're going. Uh, SD, SDK consolidation, all the various different SDKs are being lumped together. Uh, Autodesk Forge design automation. And that's kind of it. That's the roadmap anyway. So I will link the roadmap if you want to get into more details. Also on the topic of the 2020.1 release, there is a lot more update to it, smaller stuff. We've also got known issues and workarounds. This is in the full-on, full-blown release notes. This is getting into the minutiae stuff. 
um, bug fixes and improvements and things like that. I will link this as well, but I'm not going to really get into it today. Nothing really overwhelmingly, you know, top level or interesting there. If you're running into one of these bugs, you'd probably be happier. If you've always wanted to assign the delete key as a, as a keyboard shortcut, hey, you can now. Um, but that's kind of it. So I will link all of these resources down below to go over this as well. But I am interested to hear what you have to say. Now, it's like I said, in the 2020 release, the fact that the star feature was a new chamfer, not that exciting. But this ability to undock and move around and have multiple 3D viewports, yeah, that one's a pretty big deal in my opinion. Now, is it enough to sell people on a $4,000 package? Probably not. But is it enough to keep people that are paying $4,000 for this package to keep paying that? I'd be interested in hearing that. So if you're using 3D Studios Max already in your workflow, what do you think of this release? And also let me know, what did you think of 2020, the original release? And are you more impressed at, at 2020.1? Are you just meh on both releases? Or were you actually more excited about 2020 when it came out? I'd be interested in hearing what you think of how Autodesk is developing 3D Studios Max, of what this roadmap's all about, and if you're gonna be sticking around, or are you starting to look at other alternatives? Are you thinking about checking out Maya or maybe going over to the dark side of the open source world and checking out Blender, seeing what the other side looks like. Or um, if you're a Blender user or a Max or Maya user, are you maybe looking at this and going, hmm, that's starting to look more interesting, or you still just don't give a damn? Let me know all these things, please, as civilly as possible, because one person chooses one tool does not make them your enemy. This is not a holy war situation. There is no reason to be like, there are perfectly valid reasons to choose to use 3D Studio Max, and there are perfectly valid reasons to not want to use it. And I just want, let's all just be civil, okay? But anyways, that is 3D Studios Max 2020.1. Let me know what you think. Comments down below as civilly as possible. All right, see you all later. Goodbye.